Back live to the FIM World Motorcycling Championship with Certino, Swiss watches since 1888. Welcome back to Madrid, it's the Harama Grand Prix. Harada still leads from Toru Ukawa by just a third of a second further back, but Williams still has third position. They are all spilling over pit wall opposite our commentary box, urging the Ulsterman on. Meanwhile, he is still 0.5 of a second ahead of Harachika Aoki. Fuchs on the break had managed to come up into about fourth position, but he lost it on that last lap, but here is the danger man. Yeah, we saw Fuchs up there, he dropped back with Kapi Rossi on that works of Prilia. He is laughing very quickly, did a 35 three on the last lap well that is better than a second quicker than Jeremy McWilliams so I think we're going to see the man spoil the party for the Austrian here could be uh, Capi Rossi unless he comes into some kind of problems here with that very quick works of Prilia in spite of the fact that he did a long dirt track excursion at the end of the straightaway and really was fortunate to get back on the track at all he could have killed the engine out there he was spinning it up he was almost in up to his almost in up to his axle it looked to us like and here we've got the battle at the front between these two Japanese riders, Harada uh, on the Aprilia and then Ukawa on the improved but perhaps not as good as it should be NSR. I think there are some bits on it that they've reverted back to the sort of Mugello specification. It's a bit of a mishmash between the Mugello spec and the Pori car spec, and they've just, they've really gone back to, to what they know. Yeah, it sounded very good when I was out on the track the other day listening to this sure. bike come out of the corners. It certainly sounded better, let's say, than, uh, oh, let's say Stefano Perugini's machine. Perugini, by the way, 12th in position. 12th place. So uh, the Perugini NSR is uh, is struggling a little. Meanwhile, over the line we go. We complete lap 11 of 28. The pit ball goes out for the sparkling number nine of Jeremy McWilliams. Comes past our box. He has a lead over Harachika Aoki, still of 0.5 of a second. There is Aoki number six, but it's not going to be Aoki because Cardoso looks as if Aoki is going to be taking him. Does Cardoso make the move stick? I think it did not. Not yet. Cardoso looking very aggressive back there. He may try something at the Le Mans S's as they come up this time. Now they're coming into the Le Mans S's, but he's a little bit too far back. Cardoso on the semi-work supported with Kenneth 3 Yamaha. We've not seen him running so well at all. We're at the Span we're at the Harama Grand Prix, the Grand Prix of the community in Madrid. That's got to be worth a couple of extra horsepower to him. Jeremy McWilliams, third, and looking very strong in that third position. I still think the danger is not going to come so much to Jeremy from this group immediately with him, but there's uh, Costes off the track so that uh, completes a wonderful day as the two tech three yamahas off the track at the same place two tech three hondas chesterfield tech three hondas off the track at the same place costes the young frenchman he goes into the gravel unfortunately gets away with it there is louis dantin he looks over his shoulder and sees number 11 jürgen fuchs deep uh, deep dark blue and he's looming large in the visor of his crash helmet but meanwhile it's mcwilliams who's still in that third position well, we haven't got any Americans running in the 250 class for me to get excited about, but we do have some Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania technology running here with Team <laughs> with Team Optiman. And, of course, uh, Jeremy McWilliams, a guy it's really easy for me to get behind because he's a veteran Grand Prix rider, 34-year-old. He's paid his dues in the 500 class, came into the 250 class with a private machine, and he has really been, in a lot of ways, he's been the story of the season this year. Now this is the battle for third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh position because here is Loris Caparossi. He has just set his fastest lap of the race, which by the way is comparable with the lap time of Hatetsuya Harada, who's leading it. I remind you that Harada is leading with Ukawa. Those two, they're about nine seconds ahead of this battle for third position. Whoa, we got too much... Oh, okay. The Looked like he was completely off the screen there, but Harada has pulled out a little bit of a gap here on Ukawa. Now, Harada lapping on the last lap in a 35-1. Ukawa did a 35-2. To give you an idea of the pace these leaders, they're pulling away from uh, McWilliams, Aoki, Cardoso, and Fuchs, who are all running mid to high 36s. And then you've got the danger coming from the rear here. Number in seventh position, number 65, Capirossi. He's lapping 35-1. That was the quickest uh, lap that he's done in the race, and nearly as quick. And Perugini has retired. Perugini's in the garage, and his day is run. Very disappointing season so far for Stefano Perugini on the uh, Castro Honda. So then we've got Harada leading and it looks like Dennis is extending that lead. I'll keep a uh, keep an eye on the gap that he has over 
Toru Ukawa. The gap was 0.423. And as the oh, so, no, he's just taken off a tear off. Sorry, Toby. It looked like he was sitting up with a problem there, but he just pulled a tear off away. <laughs> well, it makes him grow half a second quicker because look, <laughs> it's now 0.9 of a second. He pulled out half a second with 15 laps to go. But uh, another danger man is on another acrylic. It's Jurgen Fuchs. He's number 11. He pulls out with the fluorescent crash helmet. Is he going to take uh, Haruchika Aoki? No, he doesn't. But is oh, he going to? Copy Rossi is there now. Copy Rossi has made contact with that group now. Copy Rossi lapping in 35-1 on the last lap. Cardoso looks over his shoulder, sees a very bad sight indeed. Here comes Copy Rossi. We are on lap 14 of 28, halfway point <coughs> in this Harama Madrid Grand Prix. This is the battle for third position. It is Jeremy McWilliams who is in third position. Aoki just behind him. McWilliams, we are sure that we, he was going to get a podium position. That's exactly what he was said. He said he was going to do over the uh, the off season during the winter, and nobody really believed him. But you really don't mess with this guy. 35, 34 year old veteran. It was his birthday during the Japanese Grand Prix, the first round of the championship. All sorts of goodwill faxes coming into the Suzuka circuit for Jeremy and um, he doesn't mess around on a 250. He's a very, very physically strong rider, and that's what you need around this Harama track. It's very twisty, and the, the, also the, the, the sort of uh, the longevity of your fitness will be coming into it. It is very, very warm out there, surely up into the 30s. Well, we're going to be seeing that with Capi Rossi now, who has caught them, but the problem is going to be picking them off. We've gone back to the leaders here now with Harada. We see he is extending, or appears to be extending. Toby's keeping track of this now, and will tell me in just a second exactly how much gap he's pulled and here's that battle for third place coming across the line now. Harada uh, has, what's, what, what was the time there, Toby? Uh, Harada's uh, lead on Ukawa was 0.9 of a second, but he's pulled out 0.6. But there's the danger man. It looks like the Germans coming through. Well, now it looks as if also the Germans coming through and also the Italian because Capirossi has gotten by Cardoso and he started to pick riders off as he works his way back. He's got to be patient. Harama is a difficult racetrack to pass at. You've got to pick your spots. Uh, when you're riding in Aprilia, some of those spots can be the straightaways. That helps a bit. Loris Capirossi will be working his way through here. Theoretically, on the basis of the lap times he's doing, we could see him on the podium. Jeremy McWilliams will be doing everything he can to prevent that. Well, I was out there watching the 250 qualifying session yesterday up on the inside of the corner here that we're coming into, and I can tell you that it was actually Valentino Rossi, who's out of the race, by the way, and uh, Jurgen Fuchs, who was really strong out of this corner here. They were right on the gas, giving it a huge handful, but having said that, I correct myself before I actually say it, Jeremy's holding his own ground, but... I think he might be on uh, on borrowed time, unfortunately. We're back with the leaders. There is the black bike of Harada on the right-hand side of your screen. Toru Ukawa is just coming in to clip the apex of the last corner there. The gap was 1.5 seconds between Harada and Ukawa, and tick, tick, tick. It's going to be a lot more than that. It's 2.3 now, 0.8 in one lap, Dennis. Well, Ukawa, and we've got uh, Sebastian Porto, the Argentine rider, retiring here, pulling into pit lane and he was not having a very good day. He was down in 16th position. Well, Capirossi's moved up yet another place now. Capirossi is back up into fifth and looking up the inside of Fuchs. So Fuchs on a semi-works Aprilia and then Capirossi on a works Aprilia and they are both trying to uh, get up on Jeremy McWilliams to take that third place away from him. We've got 13 laps to go, and Jeremy, wow, he wishes he could see that checkered flag a little bit sooner, I am sure. I can tell you down in pit lane at the uh, Queen's University Belfast squad, they've actually got the welding torch out on their stand, the sort of scaffolding stand they have on pit wall, because they've had to strengthen it. There are so many people on it. It is a sea of black and red shirts, which is their team uniform. It is bending in the middle, but I think he's on borrowed time, but he's he's fighting hard. He's, he's nobly taking the fight to those works of Trillias. They've got so much grunt at the top end. Rumours of well over 100 horsepower out of a 250cc two-stroke twin-cylinder engine. That is an enormous amount, but he's holding his ground. McWilliams is in third position. We're on lap 16. 
Well, McWilliams is going to have to uh, try to make that bike as wide as he possibly can over these last laps. He's going to the Bugatti Hairpin now. Capirossi up the inside of Fuchs now. He's made that move, so it's going to be Capirossi taking the threat to Jeremy McWilliams now. This is uh, second place. Well, it's first and second here. Harada and Ukawa. You see that huge gap as it opens up there. Harada at the end of the straight here at Harama. The only place you get fifth and sixth gear in. The rest of this racetrack is all first to fourth. There's McWilliams leading from Capirossi across the start-finish line now. They'll be uh -oh. coming down toward that funnel at the end of the straightaway, so Jeremy's going to have to be very defensive. He's got, He's got a lot of places to cover here, but Capirossi was able to blast past before they even really got onto the brakes and now is up into third place. Nothing very technical about that, just head down and right hand well and truly open. So, McWilliams, at least he was in third position, and it was interesting to see yesterday that his, uh, he's gaining even more respect in the paddock because people on NSRs and Aprilias are looking to McWilliams for a toe in practice to get a slipstreaming uh, effect from him. Oh, look at Caparossi. Look at the supreme power of that Aprilia just rocketing away up the hill as they go over the crest of it behind the enormous crowd that we've got here at Harama. We are on lap 17. It's going to be a real large last few laps to try and get that third position back from Caparossi for Jeremy McWilliams as the crowd applaud. <laughs> I don't know if it's in sympathy, but here comes Fuchs. McWilliams takes a wide line. We're coming down to the hairpin. Yeah, don't forget this uh, Prilia, the dock shop of Prilia of Fuchs is not going to be an awful lot slower than the works of Prilia of uh, Loris Capirossi, so Jeremy well, well going to be pushed to the limit here. And uh, let's keep our eye on Cardoso. The Spanish fans certainly are, because he's going to be trying to put a move on Harachika Oki, uh, as right now Cardoso's back in seventh place. Harada out on his own. Uh, he's just going to be counting the laps down on his board now. Ukawa fading away behind him. And Harada, who won the World's Championship here in 1993, looks like he's en route to win the Grand Prix of the Community of Madrid as long as that Aprilia keeps ticking. Fourth position, fourth position. It's going to be between McWilliams and Jurgen Fuchs as they come down into that first corner with 11 laps to go. Oh, Fuchs has got him. Oh dear, McWilliams is down into fifth position, but that's still by far and away going to be, should he finish there, his best ever finishing position. I remind you that he finished seventh at Imola last year, but of course he was cruelly uh, robbed of a sure certain fifth position at Mugello this year. I think ran out of gas. That was very, very uh, bad luck for the Ulsterman. Fuchs in fourth position on that Aprilia, but look at Caparossi, he is just streaking away. I remind you, this is the battle for third, fourth, fifth McWilliams. Sixth is Harachika Aoki on the dark blue number six machine. And then it's going to be the red antenna tray Yamaha of Jose Luis Cardoso, who is in that seventh position. As we wait, wait, wait to try and find uh, Tetsuya Harada. He's coming out of the Bugatti hairpin now, going up to second, up to third, maybe just getting fourth gear as he comes into that double apex right-hander that brings him to the top of another hill, begins then the charge down through the tunnel corner, because the tunnel goes, under goes the underneath, race track. underneath the racetrack. Harada leading the championship by five points. He's leading this race. He's going to be by at least four and a half seconds. He is annihilating Toru Ukawa behind him to the tune of 0.6 of a second a lap. Her Ukawa is in <coughs> second position in this race. And then third position is still going to be held by Lois Caparossi. We are on lap 19. So we've just got a few more laps to go here in Madrid.